All right, we are live on Facebook. We have Orit Eisenberg and her beautiful daughter, Emmy, talking about mental awareness, the stigma, a whole bunch of goodies. And we'll be on air very soon. Hope you enjoy the show. <clears throat> so when that goes on, right? Then we're on the air. <clears throat> Ah, commercial. Can you hear commercial? Can you hear? If they're Turn loud, up the volume. you can change the volume. You can just fix it. You'll feel ah, it. Got it. <laughs> yes, we have music interludes. Not this now, but when we return from... Here we go. Showtime. Good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed, a show about the ins and outs of family life. So your life isn't going exactly as planned. Well, you're not alone and we're here to help out. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in free retirement home search and senior transition support. Here with my co-host, Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Coming right up on today's show, as Mental Health Awareness Month begins which is just starting now, we thought we would invite some very special women. We have in studio with us Orit Eisenberg and her beautiful daughter, Emmy, that are with us. And they're going to share their personal journey that began 20 years ago when Emmy and Macy's dad was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and their experience with the medical system at that time. And Corey, what do we have on the second half? And then we are... Uh, very fortunate to have Emmy and Orit staying in studio with us because they're going to share how they got involved in Mind Strong and Young Minds. That's a program that runs out of the Jewish General Hospital and how these two powerful initiatives are working to break the stigma of mental illness. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. Their story is incredible and we hope you stay tuned for that. Uh, but just before that, Corey, you are all over the newspapers and pictures and uh, keynote speaker at the upcoming Coming Center Caregiver Conference, which is this Wednesday. Congratulations. I am. Thank you so much. It's like, um, I, again, I, I hear that and I get a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Like, I do get a little <laughs> nervous about it, but I am excited. It's such an important initiative. And um, I really want to give a shout out to Coming Center for taking the lead on this and making sure that services for caregivers are known throughout the city. They have quite a the impressive lineup of, um, of speakers, breakout sessions that they have, everyone from Mark Stolo to uh, Zelda Fridas, Jessica Smith from the YWCA is coming to talk about navigating the system, the Sandwich Generation with Norma Joseph, who was an incredible speaker, and uh, of course our guest from last week, Nadia Derici, is yeah, going to talk about well. uh, legal issues in caregiving. So there's so much, and there's at least... 15 exhibitors that are going to be there, including our very own Matt Delvecchio. Yeah, no, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to this one. So Leanna Services, where we help uh, transition uh, moms and dads into retirement uh, residences, uh, uh, will be there exhibiting, proudly exhibiting with a bunch of other uh, companies and services um, that will be supporting caregivers. So that's actually this Wednesday, October 3rd at the Cummings Centre. Hope uh, for those that are interested, uh, it's open to the public. Um, all right. Let's uh, get right into it, uh, Corey. You know, uh, we mentioned just uh, at the at the offset, uh, their dad, Emmy's dad, Jeffrey Zimmel, suffered from bipolar disorder and consequently took his own life. Uh, Orit spent close to 20 years learning how to navigate and advocate for support within the medical system. And uh, today we're, we're going to hear about what that experience was like and the effect it had on their family. So, uh, first of all, Arit, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. And uh, you're here with your daughter, Emmy, with a big smile on her <laughs> face. Emmy, thank you for being with us. Uh, very courageous, both of you, for being here. And um, you know what? We're very happy to have you here. Your message is so uh, powerful. And uh, so, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Thank you. Um, Arit, we're going to just start with you, and maybe we'll just back it up so you can describe uh, your story. Okay. Well, thank you, Matt. Um, where to begin is uh, really in the last four years, we got involved with uh, MindStrong at the Jewish General Hospital, more so because a friend pulled us in um, right after we had lost Jeffrey. And when I sat at this group meeting, um, 
I quickly realized the 20 year battle that I had faced with, uh, with my late husband at the time and um, what we had to go through in the system. About, uh, let's say 20 years ago was the first time that uh, Jeffrey had started with depression. And at that point, I mean, there were not many people talked about being down and, you know, going through what they went through. We did the regular thing, you know, you have your Prozac, you go back into life and then you get back into your groove. But I would say about 16 years ago is when uh, we started to go through the medical system and uh, where hospitalization had occurred and me being in a point where we needed real support. So overwhelming without a doubt. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about what happened when Jeffrey was diagnosed. In, in fact, in your experience, how does society handle, the, ha handle mental illness versus physical illness? So, you know, it's a tough question, even as I'm uh, remembering back then, it was, uh, it was a silent disease. It was a mm -hmm. silent illness. Nobody really talked about it. First, I want to say Jeffrey was a very charismatic, fun, happy-go-lucky person, very successful, great golfer. Um, he was my first love. He was great, and every now and then he had bouts of, uh, of being down, and nobody could understand it. Like, why? Like, why all of a sudden? And then when we went through the hospitalization, I'd say 16 years ago, I was, uh, we had our first um, serious tragedy that happened in our life. I had a seven-month-old and a three-year-old, and I was, uh, had Jeffrey in the psychiatric ward at the Jewish General Hospital. And if I can tell you, it was so outdated. There weren't any services. There weren't anybody. And I used to head downstairs to the cafeteria every day. And um, sorry. And I would head downstairs every day to the cafeteria. And I remember once bumping into a friend of mine whose husband was uh, battling cancer. And uh, she had her whole support system around her. And he was fighting to live. And my husband was not fighting to live upstairs. And, and people were... They didn't know what to say to us and at that point I was battling trying to keep my husband afloat and, and feeling good and, and as soon as we got out of the hospital and back integrated into life it was uh, it was it was a scary time it was a very scary time and we had many hospitalizations after I mean Jeffrey we lived life we, we grew and I, we raised our kids um, but when times were tough there was very lack of support and what was needed for the integration of back into life with mental illness. And not only that, carrying the stigma along with it. So. You're listening to Life on Rehearse. That's uh, Orit Eisenberg, and she's here with her daughter, Emmy, talking about breaking the stigma associated with mental illness. And Orit, the stigma is a big part of it, especially then. This isn't the today's world. This is uh, several years ago, more than a decade ago. And, uh, you know, we're going to switch gears over to... to uh, Emmy, um, because talking about that stigma as a child, this was, um, you know, you were going through uh, life uh, while uh, uh, dad was uh, having some issues. Um, I believe it was, what, three years ago that dad uh, passed? Uh, I'm four, actually four. Four yeah. years? Okay. So uh, I'd love to hear your perspective, uh, Emmy, um, about how, how do you start explaining things to friends? So that answer definitely changed like over the last few years um when my father was alive I so he, I pa he passed away when I just turned 15 so you can imagine like 14 years old and younger like that's a really tough thing to explain to friends and kids that age especially you know so much like knowledge about mental illness has just come to light in the last like five years so five years ago there really wasn't much to talk about and especially I didn't want to talk about it. So while he was alive, I no one really knew about what was going on at home. I definitely did have a few friends that I did confide in, and the best way I did speak to them was through the education that my mom gave me. Like I basically educated them, like just like my mom educated me from a very young age. But um, other than that, otherwise it was totally kept silent. Also. Mental illness, there's so many, I guess, misconce misconceptions about it. And I didn't want my friends to look at my dad differently because he still showed up to every basketball game. He was still so present in my life, and I didn't want anyone looking at him differently. So I definitely kept it. And then post, you said and then, as exactly, well. Exactly, but post, it went from no one in my life knowing to pretty much everyone. So I could have either, you know, kept silent and kind of let the narrative, I guess, like take a life of its own or I can control it and that's really um, why I started to talk about it and got a, very involved in educating people because 
you can't just say one sentence about it. You have to really give the full story and have to explain it to people fully. So, which leads me to something I thought was absolutely incredible, is your journey after your dad died was that you made a very conscious decision to talk about it and started with his eulogy. So we have to take a tra uh, traffic break, but when we return, we're going to hear about what you said and why you said it. Good, good oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this was, this was giving perfect. feedback. So we, so Dave over there is our producer. Could take her, take her, yeah. the earphones on. So you'll have to leave them off. Okay. What do you mean by giving feedback? Like they were so, hearing it? Or? No. Did you hear the squeaking? The squeaking sound? Yeah. yeah the, okay. So it was giving feedback. So and you won't need them anyways. But okay. I guess what was happening, the great, sound great, that was coming great, out of here, yeah. was yeah. also yeah. going into the microphone as okay. well as you. Uh, so you guys were are amazing. <laughs> very very good. Off to a great so we start. Have a few, few minutes to, to, to regroup. I'm gonna come back as you know, with the question, and you can answer how you want to answer, and then we will go to... <laughs> We're going to go into the educational part. Uh, uh, is that good? Yes. Uh, uh, does that, well, well the, what's the most significant changes you've seen? Um, I can't find other questions. This is the... Uh, we, have, well, we can have a lot of other questions, and I guess... Here it is. So Matt, I'm going to yeah, ask so about the uh, about you. I'm just going to talk about, and we're going to talk about the um, eulogy, you're get back. and well, then first thing is eulogy. Yeah, then we'll get into, and then we're going to talk about support. Oh, we didn't do a shout out for the text, anyways. Well, this is where we'll start. You okay. know, with, with the, the the text, and then um, most challenging aspects to cope with. So you can both answer. We have lots of time now. Yeah. On the um, on the second, well, lots of time. We have about at around four twenty-seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Can you, you see that clock over there? I don't yeah. know if you can see that. At around four twenty-seven and a half, then we got to get out. We'll be doing a teaser, and you're coming back on the second half, and then they go to a commercial and news. Perfect. So that's kind of our time frame. Okay. And then and we'll be on at around four twenty. So okay. we'll have about seven and a half. And then we'll talk about mind strong and yeah. young minds yeah. at, at yeah. that point after. Yeah. So now we're going to focus on the education and breaking the stigma. Or with the eulogy, right? Yeah. Okay. And is there anything else you want us to ask? Do you want to talk about challenge of being a single mom? Well, uh, the educational part, and, and what I wanted to mention is during that 10 year battle, um, I did a lot of research on how to educate my kids and yeah. it, how much information because. There's so many facets to mental illness. You can, it's not, people don't understand it. So I can ask that question to lead you into it, okay? So like, uh, how did you know what to say? To my kids? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I researched. That. Yeah, so you research, say you and researched. And I actually went yeah. for, we, I took them to speak with their father to see a doctor. Okay. You Which know, it, it was, it, you, as a mom, you have to, I have to balance my life with my kids and with him. So it was a, it was a battle. It was definitely years yeah. of but navigating the entire family and educating the, entire, the family unit. And, it, you know, so you guys should go into the whole. It's shaky. <laughs> It's a big it doesn't topic, show yeah, even yeah. in your it's voice. You're a natural. You're, yeah. you're coming out very uh, confident. It's amazing. Like hats off. I'm telling you, you. I'm adopting you. <laughs> <laughs> Not going anywhere. <laughs> Mama bear's kicking in. Exactly. <laughs> oh. That's not our sound fix. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Because it's, it's more than just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, to be honest. Uh, we're very lucky. Yeah, we're on. Wow. That's quick. Yeah, we did have one question. Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Serrato with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking with Orit Eisenberg and Emmy Zemmel about breaking the stigma associated with mental illness. 
right before we headed out to traffic, I shared what I learned about Emmy and how she began, began to break the stigma by right as soon as her dad had died, she said, I'm going to do the eulogy. I'm sure that was overwhelming to mom to hear and really unbelievable from, uh, from our vantage point to hear this. So why did you do that, Emmy? Um, it's funny because it like really wasn't a hard decision at all. It was mm -hmm. one of those things where I just, like, I knew I had to do it. And I remember like my mom sitting me down and saying, are you sure like you think you could do this? And I, I knew I, I had to do it because I had such an amazing relationship with my father. And like I said before, it went from every, like every, no one knowing anything that happened at home, no one knowing that he suffered from any sort of illness to then everyone knowing. And it's not very often that this type of thing happens. And I, I had all my friends who suddenly knew about it. And I, I like, like I said before, I wanted to control the story. I wanted to have a say. I wanted people to know that despite my dad was not just defined by the illness. Um, I had an amazing relationship with him and I loved him. And um, he was a great, great dad. And I wanted people to know that. And so that's really like what forced me to go on that stage. I really wanted, um, it was definitely because of the stigma and I wanted, I, I, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to tell so many people like all the great things about him and savor his memory and not let it be defined by what he suffered from. Absolutely unreal. It's so um, courageous and, um, but wonderful and what a tribute. So here's the, uh, my, uh, of course, what comes to mind is how do people respond, especially mom? <laughs> how do people respond? Oh, respond after the, uh, uh, yeah, the well, eulogy. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, after, um, I'm going to interject and go back to when 16 years ago, there was no toolbox that I had to, in educating my family, even the friends that were close that knew when Jeffrey was hospitalized and not hospitalized and how to deal with it. And life is complicated as it is without having an illness thrown into a family and in raising kids and educating on, especially the elephant that's in the room, mental illness, because there is no x-ray or diagnosis. It's a process that you go through and every single part of this illness is different for every single person with mental illness. You can have one episode and never have another episode. You can have a series of episodes. There's, um, it's just, it's, it's gigantic. Mm -hmm. So through that, I would say 10 year um, battle or journey that I went through. We lived a balanced married life and unbalanced where our, our family did break through the disease. Um, but I always educated my kids and that's the one thing I am so thankful for. I reached out to as many doctors, as many people. I read so many books. I did research on how do you communicate to young children, not teenagers, but six and nine that, you know, your, your father can't smile right now. You know, if someone has heart disease or someone has MS or it's more physical, people are more understanding. But when you look at a charismatic, a great guy, a successful guy, and then all of a sudden he's non-functioning for a period of time, I had to educate my kids. This is still your great dad, but right now we have to be patient. So through that process, um, I built some strength in them and I'm so thankful through that. So that morning when she had decided to do the eulogy, and I had said there was going to be a lot of people there, you know, and you have to be prepared. There's an elephant in the room. People, this was four and a half years ago. There's such a change today just because it's the trend to communicate now. But back then it was, um, you know, what do you say to them? I mean, I'd go to the grocery store and I would see people looking at me and saying, wow, I feel so sorry. You know, like, so I, I said to her, you have to address this. We're talking about daddy now and what he was about, not about the illness whether it was cancer or if it was any other illness at that time. That's Orit Eisenberg, and, and uh, she's here with her daughter, Emmy, talking about breaking this terrible stigma associated with uh, with mental illness. And you've talked about toolboxes and resources. In fact, we're going to throw it out. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, please send in your texts uh, at 514 800 have you had or do you have a family member that's suffering from mental illness? And we want to know, where did you turn for support? What resources were helpful for you? Because we're going to be talking a little bit uh, with Arit about this, because 
uh, even though this was several years ago, this is, has been many, many years that you've had to struggle with this and deal with this as a family. And so did you find that the support was there or were you struggling with some of those resources that, that were or were not there? Back then I was struggling. I will admit to it. I don't want to admit to it because of the stigma and because I don't want to show weakness because it hurt my, it, it, it broke us. I'll be honest with you. It broke us four years before, before he passed. Um, we couldn't balance life together because he, his illness got worse. Had I can't, it's, it's high, in hindsight what today. If right? Yeah. What if should have, you know, I look at when I walk into the hospital today, which I will explain more about the beauty of MindStrong and the Jewish general hospital. Now my whole body goes into, wow, I wish I had that. And I don't want any other family to go through what we went through. It's still in me forever because we were a great family that got struck with something that's unexplainable and there's a lot of people who suffer and I really do believe that there are a lot more support systems if people are educated so back then no there wasn't there was things to grasp a lot of people would say oh you should do this you should do that even my family everyone's like I don't understand and our immediate family you know we were trying to blame things each time of why and um, now today there is no blame. It's like, how do we resolve it? How do we work together? Everyone, not just the caregiver and, and how do you educate everybody around? So this becomes part of your life that you balance. And it's the train, the change of thought, which is what I'm hoping through where it wasn't there for us that mm -hmm. could go on that, that I'm very passionate about today. You know, just. So can I ask you, yeah. uh, what, what was there? Was there, there wasn't anything there really back then. I mean, we I saw so many different. I have a Bible of therapists that we went to. We did light therapy. We did cognitive behavioral therapy. There wasn't. I mean, we had regular life where we had years of good, and then there were episodes that would last two, three months, and then we would do a little bit of research. But as soon as you're out of an episode, you're so exhausted from the episode that you just want to have day to day life and live and be married and raise your kids and look for a home. And all of that, so no. You know, it's, uh, and this is part of, we're here today to start breaking the stigma that, and, and uh, mental illness, I think, has come a long ways. I very often hear the comparison to breast cancer so many years ago. You wouldn't think of, you know, breast cancer is very much out there now. Yes. We still suffer from that stigma of mental illness. It's changing. Um, but uh, through awareness and education, we're going to talk a lot more about that on, on the second half. But at least society is slowly starting to recognize that it's not their fault. It's not your fault. And hopefully with conversations just like this, we're, we're getting it out there. So thank you very much for talking about your personal stories. You're not going anywhere. We're going to have you after the <laughs> Force Ready right. News. That's right. So coming up after the news, we're going to be talking with Orit and Emmy about the creation of MindStrong and Young Minds, these two very powerful initiatives that are changing the way we perceive mental health. We'll be heading out to the news shortly. How fast was that? Yeah, it went off on a bench, no, right? no, no, but it was, no. it was from the heart, yeah. you know, so yeah. that was really, really was good. No, it no, no, it was good. It, 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 and when we see that it's uh, going, no, but it's, you were, you were speaking from the heart. You, we got to let you go, you know, so uh, it was amazing. It's, it's, it's just too much information in my head and too many experiences. It's fine, it's fine. No, it's, you, you're, so, we're getting it out there. And Excellent, now we're, though. we're going to shift gears. Definitely want to talk about the hospital and what's incredible today and what's still yeah. needed by said what's coming up next yeah. and so we're, we're not even going to mention that so i'd like to uh, and I have so, to do those little things, right? oh yeah you're coming on at 4 33 okay yeah so we have to do a little 15 second teaser okay. in between commercials to hold listeners so okay. that's coming on well not for another four or five minutes okay but it'll be we'll be just talking away socializing of course of course got to do the teaser and then uh, that's nothing to do with any of us it's just she's talking to the listeners and, 15 seconds off back to commercials and then after that I'll um, I'm going to open it up um, I'm going to do a text shout out again okay no nothing yet 
Good afternoon. This is Liz and Justin. Yeah. Uh, here's what's making news at 4 30. It's a lot of Yeah, whenever you feel yeah. you could squeeze it in. Doing and, it. Yeah. It's in my day. Let's do it. 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 Need your voter card and a piece of ID to cast your ballot. Starting tomorrow, the Bordry Metro Station will be closed for eight months, but working down will last longer. Yeah, we just and for major renovations we and avoid politics at a cost of more than twenty-three million dollars. And all that will take a year and a half, but the shutdown will be in effect for the first okay. eight months. Mm -hmm. A political cartoon yeah, of the assault of Lady Justice has gone viral okay, in the wake of recent allegations of political yeah. nominee Brett Kavanaugh. We got a couple of comments. Thumbs up from. Uh, Shelly Mann yeah. and Carlos Agian. You know that? Hello. Who? Reeds. <laughs> doing a great job out of me. Way to go. Curry. No, you guys are doing fantastic. Oh, Alouette's lose again. What a surprise. <laughs> oh, you kept the... Uh, uh, yeah, we just keep it rolling. Okay, so we got a little close-up of you guys, even. Oh, really? Okay. We're being rebels now yeah. on Facebook Live. Let's do this in 3D effect. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be on, well, another minute or so. Do you know how to, uh, how to reach, reach date? So we can give you a countdown, or you want me to ask him? Do you want me to ask him? Hey, can you give Corey a countdown? It's the, it's the TV, I mean, right? Overlap it's the TV? Yeah. That's Between. where we press. But what did I do? I once pressed it and uh, people heard. What was that about? You press on, maybe, the microphone. No? Can we overlap a little bit? Like if I mention something that like I say in the first one? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah. Our fourth so quarter is great. It's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. It's been And the fourth quarter is the fastest part because we only have about four or five minutes on the fourth quarter. Can you imagine if it's completely all done in one half? Oh, there's no way it was like that. Yeah, think about it. We wouldn't have been able to go through half of the stuff for sure. Not. There's so much to say about right now. With, uh, that's why, with that's why I was really, really pleased. Yeah. Because it's two very separate issues. Yeah. Yeah. One is your reality and living with mental illness. Yeah. And the other is this program. And let's talk about the program, which I love. And I just think is so oh, this is the best part. Yeah. It's rewarding. Matt mentioned. What's that? Matt, and when he introduced it, yeah, he said you're the daughter. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You said Macy's name. No, I haven't said Macy's name. You said it when one of the introductions. Really? Yeah. Okay, I was very happy. But feel free, eh? You want to mention it again? Yeah. Okay, I will go this time. Right? It's because I, I read it. That's why you don't think. Yeah, well, look at me. I've got everything spread out. Yeah. And I'm not going to read it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to remember. It's just like, okay, I have to remember this. I'm going to bring that point up and that point. <laughs> it's really, yeah, you, just, you need a word. Well, that's there it. We I'm, I'm, Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Back on. Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in free retirement home search and senior transition support. And I'm in studio with my co-host, Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Corey, I want to do a quick shout out. I was actually at the social work department at the Jewish General Hospital this week. Um, we do, my company, Leannis, that works a lot with social workers, discharge planning, and uh, the, uh, the main receptionist there, Georgia, who's just... Uh, fantastic she goes oh man i heard you guys last week and oh, i was going through a rough patch and you guys just put a silver lining around it and you made me feel so much better so uh, uh shout out to to the the uh, the social work departments not just the jewish general hospital all hospitals the social workers do an incredible job in very tense emotional overwhelming times so uh, great job there i also want to mention you probably heard on the news with luciano there's um you know we're talking about mental illness there's a wonderful um, transitional housing facility that's just opening up in DDO tomorrow, as a matter of fact. And Marla Newhook is heading that up. So we wanted to, I was talking to Marla earlier today, and uh, it is a noble cause. It is at this point in time for 18-year-old and plus males look, going through some tough times with mental illness and, and uh, looking for some transitional housing. So that is a wonderful cause if you need to reach Marla, it's 514-694-5850, and she can be reached at extension 25. What a fantastic resource. What it really is. Resource. Speaking of resources, we want to hear from you. That's right. <laughs> so please send in your text. We're talking about breaking the stigma of mental illness. If you have or had a family member that is suffering from mental illness, where did you turn for support? We want to get the word out, so please text us at 514 800 and uh, we'll let our listeners know so uh, you they're no stranger to us today or uh, and her daughter Emmy came on the show to t share their story um, after struggling with bipolar for over 20 years Jeffrey Zemmel four years ago he took his own life and but that incident became the motivation for or and her daughter Emmy to establish young minds it's a program out of the Jewish General Hospital Foundation the goal of this program is to bring mental health issues out of the shadows and highlight the importance of talking about them. So thanks again, ladies, for uh, sticking around to share your information. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wanted to start with um, just explaining what the program is. So Emmy, can you start by explaining what Young Minds is? So Young Minds is a free educational workshop um, led by psychiatrists and psychologists from the Jewish General Hospital. Um, that educates um, teenagers on mental health. We visit, um, our program visits a ton of different schools in Montreal. Um, I have the opportunity to speak alongside uh, the doctors and psychologists who give an educational presentation, and I personally talk about 
the story with my father and the importance of breaking the stigma and as young people talking about mental illness openly in schools. It's amazing. Now, I mean, first of all, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 19. 19 years old is, is, is uh, unbelievable and, and good on you getting the word out there. And so why did you get involved in, in Young Minds? So um, I got involved because of what happened to our family. Um, when my father passed away uh, four years ago, um, I was very much affected by the stigma. My whole family was, my sister, my mom. And we had such a great relationship with my father, and we didn't want the illness to overshadow. Well, I'm going to interject here. Just how it all began is when I went into, when my friend pulled me in to help volunteer at this MindStrong event. Just to go back, the Jewish General Hospital started about, it's going to be actually its fifth year. Mm -hmm. uh, this MindStrong is a fitness event that happens May. It's going to happen May 5th, this, uh, this year coming 2019. And I think it's Liz Wiener and Justin Lassard uh, Weiser who are chairing this event. But I got pulled in as a volunteer raw right after uh, our whole episode of what had occurred to my personal family. And when I was sitting and listening with the committee, uh, I was talking to the chair at the time and saying, you know, if we say that it's, you know, it's one out of five that suffer from mental illness. And out of that one out of five, 75% starts in adolescence. So that's between age 15 to 25. And when we were sitting in this one meeting, I said, we should be heading high schools. So I came home two and a half years ago. Um, I was just sitting, really not interjecting too much because we were very raw. And I spoke with Emmy. I said, do you want to do a pilot project at Selwyn House? Let's do one workshop. I had spoken to the chief of psychiatry at the Jewish General Hospital, Dr. Carl Looper, and their team decided, let's, let's try this. And we had a bunch of senior students come in where the doctors came in and we did an interactive workshop on educating what is mental illness versus mental health, what are the signs, how do we break the stigma, and the interaction and the feedback from these adolescents started a whole Young Minds movement underneath the MindStrong umbrella in regards to raising awareness and educating. And Emmy took on the role of being that representation for that age group. And that's where we, we went from that point. And today we have schools signed up. We did, I think it was 12 last year. We have a waiting list this year. And we have a ton of youth, young adults, wanting to become part of Young Minds. And this is the initiative, Breaking. It's going to start with them. Right. So I wanted to ask you, Emmy, why target the teens? So, like, the statistics actually are one in five suffer from mental illness and 75% of that starts in adolescence. So that statistic, I think, speaks for itself in why it's so important to start the education at a young age. Um, but also just getting to know yourself and understanding what mental illness is, even if you, it doesn't start at, as a teenager, like it's important to understand what it is just in case it comes down later on down the road. And also it's so important to um, understand what your friends are going through. Um, and or just family members. yeah, or family members, just anyone in your life. It's important to be understanding and to be um, of what someone else is going through. So that's why it's so great to instill it at such a young age. That by the time they're old, I, I always say in my speech that by the time I'm older and I'm an adult, I want mental illness to be just like any other f physical illness in terms of how we speak about it. Um, it shouldn't it shouldn't be viewed as a weakness, but just as a regular obstacle. And I think we're on the road for that, just mm -hmm. by seeing how the adolescents interact and engage. For sure. And how well educated they are today. Right. We didn't have that five years ago. It's because of the media today, with all the these famous uh, people who are coming out and showing what you know what elements they've been suffering from and how they balance. You know, it, it's such a, a great cause, and I'm so major, 19 years old, <laughs> doing this. Um, and, uh, and we have uh, Ori Eisen, uh, Eisenberg uh, with her daughter, wonderful daughter, Aunt Emmy, uh, talking about breaking the stigma of mental illness here on Life on Rehearse. And, and uh, just very quickly, so is, is you're going to schools, right? Um, are you going on your own with other students? Uh, are there professionals with you as well? So bring me through a, a quick little... Uh, session. Right, I'll answer that one. We have a full professional workshop that is being run by psycho psych psychologists and it's also approved by the head of psychiatry. So it's an actual interactive statistics slideshow questions. We do a silent question period so not anybody, you know, we put questions into a basket and then there's an interaction after. We work with the social workers of the school 
and what we're building this year, it, it's also um, underneath the umbrella of MindStrong is getting these, these adolescents involved in this big fitness event and under having a young adult division at the Jewish General Hospital to raise awareness and to raise funds. There is a lot that has been raised to date, which I will share with you. I don't know if at this point... Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, go I'm ahead. beyond go proud of, uh, of what's going on at the Jewish General Hospital now. Um, they've raised over $4.5 million to date just from this Beautiful. fitness event from four years. And this is going... They are... They're, they're, there's a lot of changes that are happening at the hospital. That's wonderful to hear. Big dollars and continues to do so. We'll talk about the event, uh, uh, but we are going to head for a quick traffic update. But before that, I want you to think about, uh, you, and you both have, I think, different answers to this, but uh, what is the most important message that you want to get out? You've got your, our listeners listening, and we want to hear from both of you about your most important message. But first, let's hear, head to traffic and hear from Kira Yeager. Right now in Boucherville, so it's about a 20 30 minute delay on 20 West. And the accident is out around the It is. You're, you're going you're to be driving home and you're going to say, Well, we could have been more. The promo is the promo also quite difficult on the 132 yeah, eastbound and right westbound. Right yeah, we'll ask. Yeah. And I think, so just a real quick, okay, because yeah. uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more from Emmy's perspective as well on things. Um, so most important message we can get out there. So this is kind of addressed to both of you, but we'll start with, with Emmy. Yeah, okay. I, I wanted, we didn't touch upon the after the workshop part, which I think is really important. Because like, I know, but we really need to talk about also what uh, the youth mental health coordinator, what the, the app that there is out there. People should know the resources that they talk about. Well, what you can do is send me that, and we can say we're going to list on our Lloyd Farmerhurst page okay. all the resources yeah. that have been that developed. Right? Has yeah. been developing too. Perfect. Yeah, because that's my because that's still needed. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, because we're going to run out of time very okay. quickly, so yeah. we want to make sure we absolutely tackle. So. Most important message to mm -hmm. get out there, mm -hmm. and then Corey, you're going to follow up with that. I, um, I'm going to follow about the, the resources that have been developed because that's what we need to get out, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Is that the most important thing? The resources that have been developed and where the money's going to, in terms of or like just backing like right back up from what we've talked about, uh -huh. and the thing that we need to get out there that because we're going to run out of time pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. So, is it resources that is the highest priority that we've got to ask about? Resources and. Um, what did you want to ask? Uh, well, educate. I want to say, yeah, I want to say talking, like educating, talking about question. it, and so, creating. So before the resources, I'm going to ask a question about what, what you want to say, what and what happens after the workshop. I'm going yeah. to ask you what happens after. Well, workshop. I, I can tie that into what's what's the most talk. important message. Yeah, well, right? I, I can You're tie that, tie it in and I'm going to say that after the workshop, we we actually created a community of students that are devoted to talking about it, and they are all mind strong, uh, young minds ambassadors, and that's really a great. Like and what, way we don't start with where the dollars have gone, and we'll do that in a we, we'll do it we a snippet, time. and then no, no time. Okay, because they they're doing if, voluntary if, psychiatric if, work. It's if, if we have time at the end, so yeah. do, so that's uh, the where the dollars are, are going. Yeah. Okay, we'll have time to squeeze that in. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it, but this would be much more important to hear right from. Okay. You know, yeah. yeah. All right. So where are the dollars going? <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> About fundraising or awareness was one of the questions we wanted to ask. Well, that's where the dollars are going. Yeah. And that okay. Is. Very good. So should we try to? Uh, I'll well, we can try. Do we well, have time? Well, that's Marcus I'll ask him what he wants to do. Yeah. We have to do it. <coughs> Dave, we have to do our 12 second <coughs> teaser for next week's show. When would you like to do that? I'm not even saying it. I got it. You know these 12 second teasers that we have to do now for all following shows? We have to we have to record that before we leave there. Do you want to do that after the show? Okay. After, after the, the show? show. Yeah. So we are, you're picking up the teaser, then okay. I'm going to ask teaser about question again, what's resources? the most important message to get out? I'll address it to you. Okay. And then Corey. I'll ask about the way. Uh, tell us about the resources. That have been, where 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 the dollars are going? Well, Which it's two different questions, right? The resources and where the dollars are going are two different issues. Well, because of the dollars, they've developed all these resources. Yes. Because of the dollars, yeah, absolutely. It's the same question. It's a it's un yeah. underfunded. So if I say the resource, what if, what are the resources that have been developed? You can, that's I'm going to go into some of that. Yeah. 
So at that point, can you just mention the dollars that have raised? In yeah, answering yeah. the question? Yeah, okay, she so already perfect. mentioned it. Yeah, I raised 4.5 million. 4. 4. 5 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm growing, you know. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, we'll get into what? Longer term plans? If we have time. Yeah, because that's only two questions so far. That's time. To go back. We're going back. Here we go. And welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. We're talking, trying to break the stigma of mental illness with Orit Eisenberg and her wonderful daughter, Emmy. Um, so much to talk about. We're going to run out of time. So we, we did talk before traffic. We know you both want to get uh, the message of what is the most important message that you want to get out there. We'll start with, uh, with you, Emmy. Uh, the most important message I want to get out there is to educate yourself and to con continue talking about it. And I think that's why... The program that we are part of is so important and so like amazing because not only do we educate, but we also, we really do follow through with the students and um, we create sort of this community of students, a committee actually, we have like a Young Minds Committee of students who want to keep this goal in mind at all times and keeping the initiative alive within the school throughout the year and just encouraging conversation constantly. That's really what it's all about and just being there for your friends and all of that stuff, yeah. And for those who are just tuning in, we're talking about young minds and you're going around doing presentations to schools and it's not just, it doesn't end at the presentation. In fact, that should be the beginning of discussions. Right, exactly, exactly. And what about you, Ari? What's your ultimate goal in, doing, in, in getting involved in what you do? It's, uh, it's breaking the silence. It's every time we go to a school and we see that um, statistically there's so many kids who are suffering for them to be able to go up and speak to someone and, and seek help. And if they learn the coping techniques at an early age, it could really save a lot of future pain. So as educate, continuing on with this young minds, creating chapters with ambassadors within schools and letting this grow to become something larger and breaking the stigma. That's it. Yeah, it really is fantastic. Um, can you talk to us? I know you've got some some plans, long-term plans uh, for well, Mind Strong and Young Minds. And the Jewish Sorry. No, the ahead. Jewish General <laughs> You really Hospital. want to talk about these plans, I mean. <laughs> well, I know we're short you. with time. No, so but you're so passionate I'm, about it. I'm you know, beyond that's passionate. It's, yeah. uh, the, G the Jewish General Hospital has really been putting their dollars that they've raised in, into work. And uh, I'm very proud to see this, that they've hired a youth mental health coordinator at the hospital. So if someone does go into emergency who is sick, there's someone there to guide them and help them. Um, they, are re, uh, they have a family peer support worker, there's programs to educate, they're redoing the entire psychiatric ward. The inpatient unit, is uh, there's going to be a healing room, there's, uh, there's different programs, and most importantly, there's a day hospital. This mm. is something that we could have used as a family. Having a hospital that when you're in between not needing hospitalization, but where you can go during the day when you need to integrate back into life after an episode or when you're not well, or you're not bad enough, but you need to see someone and seek and get immediate care. You don't have to go to an emergency. There will be a day hospital with e enough staff to support that. So these dollars, they still need to raise. There's still a lot more needed because there's underfunding, unfortunately, in regards to the psychiatric uh, unit um, throughout hospitals. But it is now gaining awareness, and now change is starting to occur. So this MindStrong event, Young Minds, this is where we want everyone to get involved and to, uh, and to continue growing. Did you want to add something? Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to say, like, the awareness and the fundraising, they really go hand in hand. Because when we do these workshops, yes, we're raising awareness and we're educating, but it's really so important that we follow through and having places to go. You know, we want people to be able to be aware and then be able to seek help. So it's really, so, both of the components are so important. So I know that uh, Orit gave me a copy of uh, where the dollars at work are, and it is a very long, impressive list that I, I promised her we would um, load up on our Life Unrehearsed Facebook page so that people can really see a lot of the services and really to uh, tribute to you and all the teams working towards ensuring that uh, services are out there and they're good services yeah. and they're nice services and they're relevant services places where people feel like they can go to and I mean it's incredible with cancer today you, it, it's, it's it's scary no matter what illness you get uh, a family um, is presented with and hopefully not but you know th there's a place to go and they shouldn't be ashamed of it 
Yes, and that's important. Yeah, we're, and we're feeling the tie. You know, physical disease versus mental disease should be on equal footing, mm -hmm. and it's not today. But it's going down uh, that path. And and you, I thought you brought up Arita, a very good point about these day hospital visits. I, I think that's the bigger picture. Um, you know, a tragedy in your life happened. Now it's post. But you had years and years and years of, of dealing with it. And, and, and it's the pre that we need to get out there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's happening. One mm -hmm. in five Canadians. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's out there. Um, and so you know, good on you for, for getting the message out. And um, if you were to recommend anything like for the pre, you know, you're, you're in the middle of your deep. It cost mm -hmm. you your marriage. Uh, what could you recommend to try to to um, help people that are going through tough times? It's like every uh, it's like anybody going through any illness. It's to, it is an illness, mental, and whether you might not see it, it's a true illness that affects the entire family. So you need a real team, and that is the most important: is educate everyone, your friends, your family, your coworkers, speak up about it, not be ashamed. Um, and this building these resources, I, that's the one thing that is the most that day hospital and having a support person, because there's a lot of in between. There's a lot of gray. There's no X-ray. It's it's a matter of trial and error. Right. So that's Th really helpful. Thank you so much, both Dorit and Emmy, uh, for sharing your story and um, being so forthcoming and honest about uh, the challenges that you've experienced. Because I think that so many people must it must have resonated with so many people. Just tell me, how can people find out more about uh, MindStrong or Young Minds and or get involved? Uh, you want to answer Yeah. That? So uh, we actually have a, a website. Well, there's the MindStrong website, and we're uh, considered like a subdivision in the website where you can go and find out what we're all about. And um, we're actually developing these chapters where schools could um, get involved, like or anyone, just to be a MindStrong ambassador, MindStrong Young Minds ambassador. So MindStrong and Young Minds, and that's on the Jewish General Hospital website right so, yeah. wonderful thank you both for being here very 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 uh um <laughs> fascinating <laughs> and uh, not just fascinating but you're helping a lot of people and mm -hmm. thank you for being here next week coming up on life unrehearsed well you know october 17th Corey's coming all around the corner legalized marijuana well we have an, uh, an incredible guest um, a scientist who will be talking to us all about the health challenges that we might expect with legal marijuana and then we're also going to have linda fishman in studio linda is an author of recovering rainbows uh, could you imagine losing your mother and two siblings in a plane crash well she um has been extremely resilient and you're going to hear her incredible story that's next next week on life unrehearsed where you can catch us every sunday at 4 p.m Did you see the text? I didn't. I could interrupt you. No, no, no. I saw it, but I didn't want to uh, answer. I'm going to respond to that uh, individually. But it's also he would be very happy if we did a shout yeah. out. Yeah, um, I was thinking Maybe about we'll doing it, it, but we'll bring um, it back next week at the beginning or yeah. something. Yeah, I'll be really yeah. great. But I wanted to test that number. I wouldn't be surprised if it was someone within. So yeah, I want to. Uh, yeah. So we had it. We had a text. Yeah. One text, unfortunately, yeah. not okay. But they want to know about our sponsor, who's yeah. Marco Vendramini. How do I get a hold of uh, him? He's a yeah, financial so let's planner. See how we can get that. So I'm going to take that number yeah. down. Oh, in terms of uh, no, 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 he's no. He, he's a financial advisor. Yeah. Oh, so okay. he's a sponsor of our show. Okay. And um, so we had a text saying, "How do I reach Marco?" Yeah. Oh, you know, so, okay. Yeah. Which is good. That's what yeah, we want. We yeah. want that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Say goodbye to Facebook, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> uh -oh.